It is the Capital Evening Show with Jimmy Hill and tonight I'm joined by the star of new movie American Pickle. It is Seth Rogen. He is here. Uh, hello. I am here. I'm not there. I mean, I'm here. I, I, I wish you were here in I'm real somewhere. life. I wish I was there too. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a bit bored of all this virtual... I, I'm a hugger, you know? I need that hands-on contact. <laughs> you, you will never hug anyone ever again. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Fully sanitized, of course. Yes, exactly. Um, whereabouts in the world are you now then, Seth? I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, very nice. Is it really nice and sunny there? Um, it's a little good. We got to, it gets a little. It's a little gray in the mornings this time of year. They call it June gloom, but it it goes June, July, and August usually. So yeah, the, the sun will be out momentarily. I yeah, think, but and and you nice. you you know what UK weather's like. You know what London's weather's like. You, you there's absolutely no complaining there. I do know. I'm from Vancouver, British Columbia, where it rains uh, conservatively three hundred and. 50 days a year so um, <laughs> I, I I understand yes <laughs> you get it you get it uh, well mate I really enjoyed the movie thank you I, I really liked it um, did you think about renaming it an American gherkin for the British audiences a British it would be a British gherkin for the for the British oh, audiences oh true yeah that could be the spin-off we'll, we'll, we'll get James Corden in it yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> So the premise, roughly, essentially, Guy falls into a barrel of pickles in 1919, comes out 100 years later, and goes to live with his only surviving family member in modern-day New York. That's pretty much it, isn't it? That is the plot of the film, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a very strange uh, plot, um, and, you know, we use it to explore kind of themes of... Uh, I guess legacy and 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 your ancestors. It all started with like a conversation I had with the the writer um, Simon Rich, uh, who I knew he wrote for Saturday Night Live for years, and um, he said he he was like I have this picture on my desk of my great grandfather when he was in his mid twenties. He just was like this grizzled looking man, um, you know, and 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 he's like, and I was in my mid twenties, and I would look at it and think if we both knew each other at the same age, he would hate me. <laughs> slash probably try to beat beat the crap out of me and 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 i really related to that when you wanted to pitch it as a film uh what was the reaction to all of these serious film executives were they on board straight away or were they like no seth we can't make about a film about this i'm sorry uh no it honestly took quite a while to get uh people to let us make the movie <laughs> yeah, um a few years uh, several years yeah um it's a weird no not shockingly hollywood does not gravitate towards originality, generally speaking. Um, and so a film like this uh, was not incredibly easy to make. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, even actually making it, presumably when you've when you got the budget and, and you, you're good to go, it's been green lit. You're playing both main characters. You're essentially acting against yourself, which logistically must be quite tough. Yes, it is a <laughs> logistical nightmare, I would say. <laughs> the, one, the most logistically complicated thing I've ever done, and I've filmed giant action movies movies with thousands of visual effects yeah. monsters demons at first you're like oh it's two seth rogans but then as obviously as you get into the film uh, you forget about that did you presumably you had a double for this well we shot the whole movie as one character and then went back and shot the whole movie oh, as wow. another character. um because i didn't want to wear a fake beard because i think they look bad yeah i had a guy ian uh who was my double ian poke uh and he um he was great, and he played against me in every scene. And sometimes he was removed entirely. Sometimes he wouldn't even be on camera, and I'd be looking at a tennis ball, or it'd be easier to just be looking at nothing sometimes. But wow. he was there every day to to help me, and he was he was incredibly helpful. Yeah, yeah, and you, it meant that you had to you got to have the genuine, real facial hair. It'd yeah, be exactly. awful if you did the whole thing and then were, you had the shave, and it's like, oh, actually, Seth, we need another scene. We got, and they brought out a terrible fake beard you had to wear. No, that would be awful. But what did happen is we thought of like one joke we wanted to add, and so I had to grow back a beard for eight months <laughs> in order to, to shoot literally one like ten second. Joke. Uh, well, I also saw it's been uh, nearly twenty years since you made your movie debut in Donnie Darko. When when did that come out? 2002? 2001. 2001. 2001. There yeah. you go. If you could speak to yourself back then, 20 years ago, speak to Seth Rogen back then, what would you What would you say? I would stay away. Knowing what I know about time travel <laughs> films, I would, it, it would only f*** things up, and I'm very happy with where I landed. So I would... I would for sure stay away from myself. And maybe just drop in a, a bit of a warning about 2020. Exactly. Stock up on Purell. <laughs> <laughs>